Hi there, it's Melody Brooke again. And today I wanna to talk to you about connection. Um, connection is one of those things that I think as a culture we largely suffer from. Um, and what I mean is we suffer from lack of connection. The connection is something that um, we are sort of trained out of from an early age. Because if we fully experience, and, and I guess I'm, I'm, I'm talking about one particular type of connection at this moment, I'm talking about connection with ourselves. And we lose connection with ourselves, um, hi Lane, um, by traumatic events that happen. You know, when children are, are born, they're born with this incredible capacity to experience everything. Um, their senses are, just unbelievably alive and um, vibrant and um, energetic and all of their emotions are experienced in an intense and powerful way and so what what happens is that because adults don't know how to deal with that they they encourage their children basically to disconnect from those emotions and they do that by um, often by shaming them out of them or ignoring them or um, hi Christy or even possibly shaming them or deliberately attempting to overwhelm them um, such as in the case of trauma so that so that they have no choice but to dissociate from those feelings so so disconnection with our ourself means disconnecting from our senses disconnecting from our emotions disconnecting from our uh, awareness of ourself and when we're disconnected from that awareness of ourself that's that's what causes us to um, have a, a whole plethora of problems right so when we're disconnected from ourselves as I think most of us are trained out of being connected with ourselves we we end up um, seeking sensation because because there's there's a part of us that sort of remembers what it was like to be that alive, and so we seek drugs, we seek seek sex, we seek um, other kinds of stimulation, risk taking behaviors, um, doing things that evoke um, survival response so that we can have uh, self harm even sometimes and for some people. Those are all things that, that we do to try to regain a sense of connection with ourselves. Obviously that's not what that actually happens. That isn't what actually occurs when we seek that kind of stimulation, but is it's a semblance of that. So we are attempting to find some semblance of connection um, through the stimulation of these sensations. Even though the truth is that if we were able to fully align and get co deeply connected with ourselves, um, the need for those drugs, the need for that stimulation, the need for those addictions would go away because then we would have the connection with ourself that allows us to fully feel and be fully alive. Unfortunately, we're not, we're not really guided in how to go about doing that. We are, in fact, guided the opposite way. We're guided away from feeling. We're uh, guided away from being connected with ourself and disowning our own feelings, our own um, senses, our own re responses to things. And so, so being connected means being connected enough that we can allow ourselves to, to fully be present in our lives, in, in our environment, with our relationships, which is another place that we um, miss connection with people. So missing connection with other people happens when we also cannot be connected with ourselves, right? So if we're not able to be connected with ourselves, it makes it very difficult to connect with others. Um, we can we can attempt to make connections in communication and um, attempt to reach to another person and we will get sometimes some of that briefly which allows us to then re reconnect with ourselves a little bit i think that's why so many of us get addicted to relationships because it is in the context of relationships or, or um, even a pseudo relationship where we have a um, something that stimulates or simulates the the sense of connection that we're we're um, longing for one of the things that has recently come out in the literature is that 
when people are um, lacking connection, both with themselves and with other people, that is the fact, in fact, what drives the majority of our addictions. So when we are a person that is struggling with um, a tendency to, to seek out those addictive behaviors, whether it's alcohol or drugs or um, sex or spending or whatever it is that, that we uh, attempt to to ad get aligned with in, in order to get escape that that sense of loneliness and disconnection that we feel so learning learning to find ways to connect with ourselves is the way through addictions and, and I've and I've seen people find different paths, not therapy paths, um, to, to connection that have been amazing. Um, mindfulness meditation, um, sports, um, uh, Tai Chi, um, yoga. Um, so a lot of physical um, methods allow us to get more connected to our body. So um, th those things can also be pathways to more addictions, of course, if they're not, um, if you don't, if you use them in a way that is, um, that causes you to shore up rather than allow yourself to experience and be connected to your body, then it, it can actually push you away from connection. But those are some ways that, that you can, whether, whether you get connected to, to yourself through, um, spirituality, through meditation, through, um, yoga, through um, dance even, through um, acting even, those are all ways that a person can get more connected to their senses and to themselves and therefore be available to having connection with other people. So if you're a person who is um, struggling with connection, I, I would highly encourage you to start with connection with yourself because when we we seek out connection with other people before we are connected fully with ourselves, we can set ourselves up to have really dysfunctional relationships. I, I'm a poster child for that in my past, so I get it. Um, but we we think that you know, especially as a child, because when when we're children and we are um, disconnected in some way from our caregivers, our, our parents, our um, grandparents, whoever it is that's responsible for our well-being when we're little, if we have a disconnection, abandonment, a, um, a trauma um, with somebody who, who is our significant person, and we have that disconnection, we will then start to be addicted to the idea that if we have a connection with another person, then we'll be okay. Because the truth was, as a child, in order to survive, you had to have that connection with a caregiver in order to, you know, to take care of you. A child, child knows somehow innately we know as children that we cannot survive on our own. Um, I just realized I had left my timekeeper over here. Hang on. All right, sorry about that. I've got plenty of time left, but I just wanted to make sure that I stayed on the clock. Um, okay, so what are some of the things that get in the way of connection? Well, connection with yourself is the first thing. So if you are a person who has been using um, addictive strategies to get a uh, simulated sense of connection, then um, the first thing that you have to do in order to be connected is um, hi Matthew is to start to discover yourself start to get more connected with yourself there's lots of different ways to do that I mean obviously therapy is one um, that, I, that I think is highly valuable highly recommend for anyone um, but some of those other ways are really valuable as well so um, finding a good acting coach is, is, is a great way hi Kimberly um, Finding um, a, a sport like yoga or, um, gosh, uh, Alex, hi. Um, th these are all ways which connection can um, help you can can help you get connected to your yourself. And mindfulness meditation is a, is an enormously powerful way to do that because it allows you the opportunity to just sit with and be aware of what's happening inside of you. And this is the very thing that we, we lose often as children when we have a lot of trauma, when we have a lot of disconnection and abandonment and uh, abuse or whatever that cause us to move in the direction of addictions because we have disconnected not only from our significant other people but from ourselves. 
And the cost of that within our uh, self, of course, is the tendency to have those addictions, but it's also the tendency to devalue ourselves. It's also the tendency to not allow ourselves to express all of who we are. Because the truth is, each of us were born with, a, with special gifts, and yet sometimes those very gifts are things that threaten the people around us. And so we, we shut those down in order to have a semblance of what looks like connection, even though it isn't really connection because it's, we, we, we have to sacrifice ourself and our own self-connection in order to have that relationship. And that's a pattern then that we will carry through into adulthood, into our adult relationships where we, we learn to shut down um, our own truths, our own gifts, our own um, um, insights that could actually transform your relationship and your world and, and other people's worlds. Hi, Georgette. So any thoughts about this? Anybody has, I'd love to see those. Um, if you, what, what's your experience with connection with yourself and what's your experience with disconnection with yourself or experience of disconnection with other people might be. So, so what, we can, what we tend to do is have these um, sort of, um, hi Bob, um, we also, we have a tendency to have these um, near misses, right? We just, we kind of get close to connection and then lose it. We get close and then lose it, which is, which is what we experience um, re repeatedly in relationships with other people in terms of our friendships, in terms of our, um, our love relationships as well. Uh, yeah, nice to see you, Georgia. Um, so, so, um, learning to, to, to be mindful and connected with ourselves allows us to be authentic, which allows us to be connected to ourselves, and learning to, to um, speak our truths in situations where it might not be comfortable to do that. It might not feel safe necessarily to do that because it might mean that we are speaking our truth in a situation where, um, uh, hi, is that, uh, I think that's Dirk, is that right? Yep, hi Dirk. Thank you all for joining today. Um, so, so that disconnection from, um, from others that happens when we, when we deny ourselves, when we deny our truth, when we deny what we really believe, what we really feel, um, hi John, um, it, can, it can actually make us think that we're in relationship with someone. It can make us believe that we have a connection with someone when we don't. Um, I'll tell you an embarrassing story. When I was in my early 20s, well, mid-20s, um, I met this guy who, um, who was very good at deception, the art of deception, and he um, made me believe that I was his number one, and we liked everything, that we liked all the same things, and we, we just had this instant sense that we were at one with each other. And what I find out later um, is, that, of course, is that that was all this, just this act that he had, had developed, which was to pretend to be everything that I uh, was wanting in a person so that he could get what he wanted. And um, I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. And, and, and I learned a big lesson from that. So I want to thank who, that guy for that lesson <laughs> because it taught me that, um, that people are deceptive and that they can be very deceptive, especially in matters of the heart. But they don't realize the price that they're paying for that is that they're sacrificing themselves. Um, Chrissy, I find that often I end up shutting down to a lot to avoid um, being exhausting to other people. Sometimes I really, uh, I can't read the rest of it, Chrissy. Unfortunately, I have to read more. Oh, there it is. I um, get brave enough to show my authentic self, but because of the trauma there is still in my body and all my rituals for safety, people really get tired of the real me and really want to fake me back. Well, uh, you know, they're not real friends if they're not able to um, be present for you in whatever state you're in. And I, and I have to say that I, I admire your your ability to continue to um, hi Andrew to um, put yourself out there and you know also allow that other people's authenticity maybe you know I've I've had my fill for today that doesn't mean I don't love you um, just give me give me a chance to um, to have a break get some space refill myself before I come back and that's okay too because we all have our limits and our boundaries as to what we can deal with, right? 
So it's respectful of them to, to even communicate that to you. It shows a high level and degree of connectedness if they are willing to speak their truth about that and to say, hey, you know, I love you, I adore you, you're precious to me, and I need a break. <laughs> That's okay. That's, that is the nature of true connection when you have people who can um, be that honest with you and you be that honest with them about, okay, I can hear what you're saying and I really feel, I might feel a little wounded by that, but I can appreciate that you spoke your truth to me. So, so this is the, the sort of the, the, the risk of connection is that you, that you have to be willing to, to be present for whatever that other person says and be a part of that, um, that open dialogue with each other. Um, so is that, uh, they don't really say it like that, <laughs> LOL. Well, you know, you might check it out because you might possibly be projecting something onto them. Um, but, but, but the more open you can be and authentic you can be about that, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm getting the sense that maybe I'm overwhelming you right now. And could you, I'm just trying to check that out. If that's true, I wanna, I wanna give you some space. And, and try to be, um, clear about that with people so that you're not um, jumping to conclusions or making assumptions that may or may not be true. Um, so, so check that out. It may not actually be what you think it is. Um, you may just be, you know, I know a lot of times when we have um, felt shame, which is a very disconnecting part experience, it really disconnects us from not only other people, but it dis disconnects us from ourselves because it, it forces down um, the, 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 the idea of our value and our um, importance as a human being. And so when you can begin to let go of shame, you can be more open about, well, I just had the thought that maybe you don't, you're not feeling comfortable with me right now. Could you, could you clarify that with me just so that I know for sure where we're at? And not take it personally because it never is personal. So another way of, of, um, of losing connection with people is to take their behavior, their emotions, their reactions to you personally. About that, lost you for a moment. Because um, I know for a fact that disconnection happens when, when you're blaming someone else. When you're in a situation where you are seeing them as the bad guy, then obviously immediately um, the disconnection happens. And when we take things personally, we are seeing, often we are seeing either them or ourselves as the bad guy, and there's an immediate disconnection. So what we can do um, when, we, when we've noticed that that kind of disconnection has occurred, then it's possible to repair that. So that's part of the, part of the work of staying in connection. Um, Yes, it is good. Andrew says, yes, this is good. It's okay to ask questions for clarity. I absolutely always ask questions and don't make assumptions about what people are thinking and experiencing. And secondarily, do not take it personally because whatever it is that they're going through, whatever, even if they have a thought about you being something terrible, that's not about you. That's about what's going on inside of them. Always, 100% of the time, that's about them. It's not about you. It's about their worldview, about their experience. It's about their uh, uh, way of putting ideas and thoughts and feelings together. All of that that happens inside of them, separate from anything that you could have possibly said or done. You may have triggered a reaction from them, that's true, but you, they would not react the way, cause in, the way they do except for what their experience is. And understanding that what their experience is is separate from yours, that their reality, your reality are completely separate, you don't have to take any of that personally. So you just take it in as information about this person that you care about. So this person is telling you, I hate you right now. Okay. I get it. Right this minute you're experiencing some feelings of, of disconnection and you really are angry and put off by me. I got it. And I can accept that information. I may not like it, but I can accept it as your truth for this moment. And, and what I also know is that, that those feelings are fleeting. They're like a river you know, flowing through a stream, like water flowing through a stream. It, it comes in and it goes out. It comes in and it goes out. And it's not necessarily something that's a permanent state. So accepting that it's okay for a person to feel how they feel, that it's not about me, it is their, it's information, it's data about them, helps me to remain in connection with them, even maybe when they feel disconnected from me. So connection, um, having a sense of connection also um, does not have to be um, mutual, right? 
you can feel connected to someone who doesn't necessarily feel connected to you. I, I see this happening, of course, with stars a lot, right? You feel a connection with um, with a star, with a, a movie star, with a rock star, with a model, um, a public figure of some sort. You might feel a connection with them, but obviously they don't know who you are, which is a distortion that sometimes psychotic people get is because they start to think that there is a connection just because they have those feelings. In any case, you, you can be feel connected to someone even if there is no relationship with them um, coming both ways. Hi, Terry. Um, so, uh, so in order to stay connected, you have to start with connection to yourself. And to get connection to yourself, you have to be willing to do the work of going inside and listening and feeling and being present and being fully alive as possible, trying to reconnect with those parts of yourself that perhaps you lost um, as a child. Many of us did. I know I have. Um, oh, thank you, Georgette. Georgette says you're a great psychologist, counselor, social worker. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, I hope that the things that I'm saying today are helpful and every Monday at four o'clock when I'm on. And I certainly would love to have you follow me um, on Facebook and follow me on um, my YouTube page and follow me on my Melody Brook LMFT, LPC LMFT page and also on Patreon. I have a new account on Patreon. You don't have to pay to be on that. Um, there are some paid accounts available, but, um, but you do not have to pay to follow me there either. So. Um, in any case, um, connection to me is, um, is the biggest challenge of, of our lifetimes because this life can be so difficult and complicated and I don't know very many people who don't go through um, some form of abuse. I, I was participating in a, um, a playback theater event um, last week and it was on a, um, connection and disconnection. and we had um, people stand up in the audience to um, uh, for each other. It's kind of a complicated process, but anyway, um, probably 80 to 90% of the people in that audience, in that random audience, had experienced um, abuse, which is a pretty traumatic disconnection, not only from the people who are abusing you, but also ends up being a disconnection from yourself because of the shame, because of the um, shutting down of feelings that you have to, and sometimes, um, dissociation that you have to have in order to survive those situations. So, so um, I don't know very many people who managed to come through childhood unscathed without some form of disconnection from themselves. So that's why I say I think our biggest challenge in life is to, is to learn to be more connected with ourselves. And, and in that process, um, in, in my way of thinking, with God, with the universe, with, with spirit, so that we are more, more whole people. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, hi, Lee. Hi, Chris. Thank you. If there's anybody new on here, please tell me where you're from. And I appreciate that you um, joined in today. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on connection, disconnection, and what your experiences might be. Hi, Robert. Um, so... So I'd like to hear some of the blocks that you experience to, um, to being able to be connected. Um, I know abuse is, is one, addictions are one, um, uh, uh, abandonment um, is one, um, just uh, natural traumas like um, earthquakes and hurricanes can, can cause a lot of disconnection because it can cause you um, overwhelming feelings that, that you can't uh, integrate. And when we have overwhelming feelings of, that are traumatic and we can't integrate them, often the, the only way to move through them is to sort of dis, disconnect and, and uh, dissociate and get away from the feelings just so that we can move forward and, and remain alive. So then we have to go through the process of reconnecting with the, ourselves, with those feelings, with that trauma, with that overwhelm, all that stuff that, that, that came with it in order to be connected. And so, Fear can be a big block to connection. So often, connecting with ourselves feels pretty darn terrifying when you have a history of um, traumatic events, like most of us have in one way or another. So, uh, so being courageous is part of that process. And, and I had to accept the reality that not everybody is able to do that. Not everybody has a mental stamina to be able to do the work of reconnecting with themselves. And, and I, I, I grieve about that because there's members of my family who have not been able to do that work. And, um, and, I, and I accept that that's true. 
and without shame and without blame, I can see that it's just the reality of, the, of, of, of who people are and that the variety of who we are and accepting that there will be a certain level of, of disconnection from that person because they are unable to connect with their own stuff and their own self and work through their stuff enough to be able to be present. And I have to grieve that loss. And that's part of my own connection with myself is to accept and grieve the, the reality of the situation. So of all of those things I'm talking about, you know, the, the, this connection with others, the most important thing is that connection with yourself and being able to be fully aware of what you need, what you want, what you're feeling and taking care of yourself and providing for yourself because that is your number one priority. Because if you cannot do that, you really can't be available to anyone else. You can't really be in connection with another person until and if, unless you're able to be connected with yourself. So uh, Andrew says, so many people have lost touch with the art of communication. Um, I'm having trouble opening that up to see uh, which limits their experience and how to connect isolation. Yeah, that that's absolutely right. And and in my experience, um, as I as I help people do this every day, is that most of the time that lack of communication is not really about the problem with communication, although it kind of comes out that way. Uh, it's really about separating out um, blame and 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 reactivity and getting stuck in that old war old brain um, survival response so that we're not actually thinking things through we're not actually communicating we're shutting things down because we feel um, defensive we feel self-protective or we feel like we have to go into rescue mode and please and placate and we lose connection hi Larry um, with ourselves and other people when we get thrown into that that way of reacting to things rather than being present with what our truth is and then we we get hooked in that cycle of egocentrism and we're in a big fight and we're not really slowing things down enough to fully listen and be present not only for with the other person but with ourselves we don't even know what's going on with us we just know that we're like all reactive and saying things that we don't even mean and find ourselves you know overwhelming emotions and don't know what's what triggered it so so the the challenge is not so much i i think communication as it is being aware of when we're flooded so that we can be connected enough with our truth that we don't project a bunch of stuff on somebody else. Because just because we're having an emotion doesn't mean that somebody else did something wrong and vice versa. Just because someone else is having an emotion doesn't mean we did something wrong. But it is information and if we're able to not be reactive, if we're able not to be defensive, if we're able to not go into blame and shame, if we can just take it in as data and not take it personally, then on only then can we move into a place of really truly being able to move into connection, not only with the other person, but with ourself. It's a big deal. It's also not easy to do. I have to coach, I try to coach people in it every day. Hi, Glenn Earl. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Andrew says, right. Yeah, but this is, this is a struggle for us because our, our human brain is designed to immediately, immediately go into that survival reflex. And when we do that, um, we lose connection, not only uh, with ourselves, but with other people. And in that process, um, end up feeling a lot of pain, a lot of misery. And, and, and then we have a hard time coming back to each other afterwards because so many of us struggle with being able to just own up and say, you know, I'm sorry, I kind of got overwhelmed. I was flooded. I don't know what I was thinking. I just felt, I, I know I said that and, I, and I, I hate that I said that. And in that moment, it felt true. But being able to do that requires a really strong um, sense of yourself. You have to be able to fully respect and love and be connected with that person that you are in order to have those kind of reactions to other people. Because if you are um, a feeling defensive and feeling agitated and not valuable and not and feeling a lot of shame, you can't do that. You can't own up to your truth. You can't own up to things that you might have done or, or, or wish that you hadn't done. So part of the process is, is recognizing when people are stuck in that place. If they can't say, I'm sorry, if they can't move into uh, to taking ownership of their stuff, that's not about you. That's really saying, that's a lot of information about them. And um, it, it allows you the opportunity to feel some connection with them because there must, there have undoubtedly been times when you couldn't do that. I know there have been times when I couldn't do that. 
So, so having some empathy for that other person when they're reactive is part of a way that your heart can stay open to connection even when somebody has um, said and done things that maybe would have been perceived as being hurtful if you're seeing it and taking it as, as a personal attack when, as I said, nothing is. So anyway, um, let me uh, check with our time here. Yeah, I'm just about out of time. Thank you guys for being here today. Hi, Andrea and Carlos and everybody for being here today. Please leave your comments below, any thoughts that you might have. Totally appreciate the fact, hi, Kathy, um, that you're here. And I will be here next Monday at 4 o'clock. Not sure what I'll be talking about then. I usually don't figure out what I'm talking about until like right before I start talking. But sometimes I do. If I do, I'll post it on Friday. Um, also, um, follow me on Melody Brook LMFT, LPC LMFT, and on um, my, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, I'm on um, Instagram, and uh, Patreon. So, also, I um, check out my book. It's called Oh Wow, This Changes Everything because it literally does change everything and how you perceive everything that's happening in your life. So, Thanks so much for being here today, and I will see you next Monday at 4 o'clock. I'll also be with the 4 at 4 on Thursday, so check that out. Bye.